Hi everyone, this is Shadow the Hedgehog, and today I will be reading The Upside Down Show Graveyard, The Upside Down Show Lost Episode Creepypasta. Now, this was in, no, this is in Gushia's Lost Episodes Wiki. Yeah, I'm still kind of bummed out after reading uh, Blue's Clues, Nose, No Clues. Basically a crappy pasta, if I were to say it correctly. But other than that, let's get reading. I used to watch a cool, funny show that aired on Nick Jr., which sadly only lasted for 30, 13 episodes. It was called The Upside Down Show. For those of you who don't know, The Upside Down Show was a comedy like preschool show that was produced in Australia. The show star the show starred the Umbilical Brothers, Shane Dundas and David Collins. They would go out on crazy adventures around various rooms in their own house, which was full of wacky and funny rooms. This used to be one of my all time favorite shows, still to this day. Mainly because the viewer plays a main role in the series. There would be the holder of the remote, which had loads of buttons. It made me sad when the show was just 13 episodes long, but recently there's a 14th secret episode that nobody but I saw. Just last month, while getting over being used by a girl, I thought I could trust, but in actuality, just last month, while getting over being used to a girl, used by a girl I thought I could trust, but in actuality, she just wanted me in trouble. I was walking in my mom's car until I tripped on a trash can, trash bin. Sorry. Inside was nothing but a DVD. I thought to myself, why would anyone throw a perfectly fresh, fresh DVD in the trash? Plus. Why in the school, why the school, why would the school instead of just taking it to the dump, why in the school instead of taking, just taking it to the dump, the title of it caught my attention. It was the Upside Down Show, Lost Episode. It was the Upside Down Show, Lost Episode. I thought the show got years ago. I thought the show got years ago when I was a kid. I wanted to take it home and watch it, but I didn't want my mom to find out since my mother is always making sure I'm not lying or doing stuff that's wrong like swearing. I stuck the DVD in my backpack and ran to the car without saying a word. My mother asked what took so long, what took me so long. I just said we had, a, we had just been outside for too long in, my bio, in our biology class. We went home, and without my mother looking, I quickly took the DVD out of my backpack and ran to my room. My mother t told me she would be eating the front po in the front porch, so it gave me plenty of time to get through this lost kids show episode. I popped the DVD into my TV and waited for the title screen. I got one the usually the usual like my Sailor Moon, Blue's Clues. Pinky dicky do, etc. DVD thing, or I just let it play. What's strange about this DVD is that it only had one episode, and it was like no, nothing I've seen before. It was like no other I've seen before. It started off with the same white background like every other episode would. This time there was a stool and one top was the picture of Miss Foyle, Mrs. Foyle, the lady that appears in every episode. Shane and David jump in, but were a lot old but they were a lot older than the original show was. I guess because it's been around ten to twelve years since it's been aired and cancelled. They didn't say anything though. And both of their faces look like they've been crying. Dave just gave the viewer the remote.
like every episode, and I press the play button. I won't go into much detail of much of much of the episode. Besides, the ending. I won't go into much detail of much of the episode besides the ending, because it's really too long to explain. But sometimes I like to keep things to myself. But one thing I can say is that Shane and David were searching for the graveyard to visit Mrs. Foyle's grave. David explained she passed away because of a rare disease. It explained why they cried earlier. And Luke, when like any other episode of the show where Shane and David take about three wrong turns, the button for the day was the fire button, where it says fire on everything. Like on sometimes the fire button was pressed, it was said either Dave or Shane or David's butts on fire. Another thing I should probably add is there was no, there were no puppet, no fight of the fly, and no schmuzzies. I suppose I'll go over all three rooms to make it less vague. By the way, the voice was a voice that always says "come in" sounded rather depressed. The first wrong turn wasn't so bad. It was full of shovels, which obviously meant it was a shovel room. Now the second was when it gets me shaky. It was filled with dirt and plants. Shane and David were digging, hoping to find Miss Foyle, Mrs. Foyle's body. Like, what could they want to? What, what could they want to do with the body? Chop it up and throw it in shark-infested water. By the way, it was the garden room. The thing was probably the most disturbing. It was the headless room, as, the, as by the name itself. Shane and, David, Shane and David were headless. What's worse about it was that their heads weren't even, even in their shirts. However, the viewer wasn't headless because they were in a television. When the viewer reversed them back home, their heads were back to normal like nothing happened. We'll skip ahead to when they finally reached the graveyard. They looked for Mrs. Foyle's grave. I saw it on the top of her with her face on it. There were also three graves behind her. Puppets, which said he died of getting his head chopped off. Vital, where his short life is over. And the schmuzzies for all getting, for all of them getting stomped on. There was also three other graves, and guess whose those were were for? They were for three dead celebrities from Nickelodeon and one from Marvel. The left was Spider-Man creator Stan Lee, who died of congestive heart failure. Stephen Carl Stevenson, best known for playing Robbie Robin, Robbie Rotten on Lazy Town died of cancer. And finally, Stephen Hellenberg, who died of Lou Gehrig's disease. What's the same about these three is that they all died on the exact same year of 2018. When Shane and David got to Mrs. Foyle's grave, they took out real shovels, not imaginary ones, and quickly dug until her skeleton was un uncovered. I felt sick the first the first sight I I felt sick I the first time I laid my eyes on the corpse. It looked like a real human skeleton. David then asked to press the fire button. Then the graveyard started to set ablaze, and the flames then consumed Dave, Shane and David. Then the episode ended. After ejecting the DVD from my TV, I broke it in half and threw it away. Luckily my mom never found out about it. But sadly, I never saved any screenshots of the episode. Unlike most people, I forget things very quickly, so the episode left my mind for a long time, but I still remember it quite often. So the ep so the episode left so the episode left my mind for for a long time, but I still remember it quite often. I understand why the original owner threw the disc away, but made the mistake of his or her by throwing it away in the school so someone like me would easily find it. Like my mom would always say, 
be sure to use common sense. And that was the Upside Down Show Graveyard. The Upside Down Show Lost Episode Creepypasta. What do I think of it? No, this story is alright. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Now, let's go over with the positives. Um, the fact that uh, the episode was explained pretty good. Now, the paragraph structure was it's all right. The sentence structure was all right. And the fact that Shane and Davis, no, Shane and David, Shane and David are actually the, the co-stars of the Upside Down show, and it's true that it only but that show only lasted for 13 episodes or whatever. Now let's go over to the negative. Now there is a now there is one part that's very hard for me to read. Um said something about uh, and what I felt sick at the first sight. I laid my eyes on the cork. That is very hard to read. You should probably fix that. And, uh, no, the grammar's alright. It's just that this creepypasta is okay. It's not as bad as Blue's Clues No Clues, but it's not as great as I am not going to get up today. So, yeah. What do you all think of this creepypasta? Did you like it or did you not? Feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. As for me, I better get back to my work. Jillian needs me for something important. But thank you all very much for watching. This is Shadow the Hedgehog signing off. Goodbye.